Good afternoon, Durham. Uh, my name is Sterling Lee, and welcome again to another episode of Durham Unplugged. Now, we've actually had a bit of a hiatus, uh, just a lot going on, so I think I've dubbed this Durham Unplugged Season 2. And joining me today, I have a very special guest. Um, I, I didn't think I can get him, to be honest, but ladies and gentlemen, we have the Honorable uh, Rod Phillips, Minister of Finance for the Province of Ontario. Rod, how are you doing today? I am great, Sterling. Thank you for uh, including me on Durham Unplugged. And uh, I've already told you I'm a little bit of a, of a I've become a little bit of a, a podcast uh, junkie. So I don't know. That's, that's my COVID habit, I think I picked up. So, good. So no, it's good a good one. What are, you, what are you listening to? Um, you know, I, it's a, it's a, um, it's a mix of things. Uh, some of it is just the daily, like some of the things that everybody listens to, uh, big story, like just like ways to get encapsulated, um, news, um, making sense is one that I, I enjoy, uh, as well, but, but, but I, I, you know, um, the uh, hardcore history, I don't know if anybody, anybody hasn't, anybody's a history fan at all and has not listened to, there's about five seasons of hardcore history. It's just a very interesting, you know, if you, if you like a three hour our biopic on you know Celtic uh, you know the the Celtic and who war. doesn't quite frankly right and who doesn't but but I just I find as a as a you know frankly just to get your mind off of you know you gotta you gotta change the it's gears a little bit yeah and uh, and and music is great for me but sometimes you just don't. You know, it, I find I find talk and 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 you just get it's kind of like radio you can pick, you know, so yeah. uh, so so good for you. I think this is a it's a great format. And and, uh, and I had any chance we get to talk about Durham is, is a good, good thing. So, well, and more importantly, I think it's just a chance for people to meet um, their politicians in a more relaxed setting. I think when they see us, they're always like, oh, you know, this person's probably a stodgy, you know, politician and I you know like I've spoken to you very casually many times and you're a fascinating individual and you know we'll get into it uh, a few podcasts I listen to just to plug them I listen yeah. to a lot of comedy based podcasts I find I find it's just a way for me to get laughs in in the car and so it also makes sense because you have a little bit a little bit of history there so yeah a little, little you know, fail of history I'm not funny at all <laughs> No, you were, you were funny enough to try so that, that's, that's right that's so um I listen to never not funny which is um a good one with host Jimmy Pardo. He's pretty much my comedic hero, I would call it right now. Just really influenced a lot of my humor. And I also listen to Comedy Bang Bang, which is an improvised podcast, which is just silly LA comedians being very silly. So check those out if you have a chance. But well, that's not about, this is about Rod Phillips because we, we got him, folks. Um, tell me, like, what, what started your path into politics? So um, you, have a, you are a chief of staff, if I'm not mistaken, for um, the mayor of Toronto. Yes. Yes. You know, actually, even 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 a bit before that, uh, when I went to uh, Western, um, you know, go Mustang. Sometimes joke, yeah, go Stang. I sometimes joke. I, I fell in with a bad crowd uh, and uh, and had a, a roommate uh, and uh, who was interested in student council. Right. And so got got the, the political bug uh, just getting involved as you know, almost everybody does at some point. It's some issue, some something. Right. And you get that sense that there is actually a group of people who talk about these things and are interested in these things and and sometimes make a difference in terms of being able to change something and so so that really uh brought me into the the political conversation and then and then you know my own background uh led me into the progressive conservative party in terms of the kind of politics that uh, that i thought made sense and uh and that you know led to a succession well, i'm of sorry i'm sorry you're you're a conservative okay this interview's over i can't i'm sorry and, I, and my the, mistake and my mistake no no sorry retake, retake. i know no, but, but, but it, but it, but it was, um, but you know, one of the things about that that's so interesting is, I've really concluded that for people who find politics interesting, um, whether they are an NDP, a Liberal, Green, Progressive, right. Conservative, yeah, you actually tend to have more in common with each other. Uh, municipal politics, and also journalists, frankly, mm -hmm. who follow politics, they have more in common with each other with than with most other people who, as you know, don't really think about it every day. Right. And so, and so, so I've had the chance. You mentioned when I was uh, as chief of staff uh, to Mel Lastman uh, back in the in the late '90s. You know that municipal politics, uh, which is where you play now, was so fascinating because um, it had NDP liberals. Uh, there weren't Greens then, but but, but yeah. progressive conservatives, and everybody worked together on what was then a really big council. And you you had to work across those lines. You know, yeah. so I got to know like Jack Layton. Uh, you know, it worked directly with Jack on a bunch of homeless homelessness strategies or or uh, david miller um you know david david and i uh, worked explicitly on some things related to transit so those are things that a lot of people who work on the more partisan side of politics don't get a chance to do but at the municipal level 
um, it all kind of comes together in terms of that. So, so that, so I just enjoyed it. It was, it was never a living for me. I did have a couple of jobs when I was chief of staff, uh, first to Elizabeth Whitmer, mm -hmm. uh, when she was minister of labor back in the mid nineties and then with Mel. Um, but those all came out of being involved in campaigns as a volunteer. Cause I, I love the politics. And then, right. you know, sometimes when you're good at it, people will go like, Hey, like, you want to come do this for a while um, but I think um, and then the decision to to run you know was really you know the, the part of politics I hadn't been involved in I'd helped run campaigns I'd helped be involved in, in supporting like when John Tory as mayor uh, worked with John on his campaigns and, and different things but uh, people talk about being a candidate but it's a whole different thing it's a it's a really a, a different look uh, and a different experience of it so uh, so in 2018 decided to try my hand at that and, you know a uh, bit of hard and you work. did okay I think you did um so that that's a really big part of it i find is um an individual's like that decision that says i'm going to run for office i'm going to put myself out there and you know just take all the criticism all the prey whatever um walk me through that process for you was it did you speak to your wife first family parents who like who who was like the first conversation you had I was a bit, um, I don't say unusual, but it was different in that a lot of people for a long time, because I'd been involved mostly as a volunteer helping out, they assumed it was what I wanted to do. So, so people have been talking about it for, for a while. Um, right. Frankly, in, in 2018, it was actually in 2017 when I, I was nominated uh, about six months before, um, it really was about um, concerns about the way the province was going. Again, mm -hmm. you know, at, at, at that point, and not to be overly partisan, but... but no, no, of course not. You'd had, you'd had one government for a long time, and I think that is usually... It's a change. Usually, it was a change year, right? usually becomes a problem like 15 years was a very long time for the provincial liberals and i think that, that that i think people were tired of it but i was particularly concerned about some of the directions um and and things like you know the the hydro situation in terms of some of the, the way things were being handled were just inconsistent with what i thought was was good for good for people and and good for the province so no and then and then you you know you you get involved and you engaged and i know you've done this uh, campaigns are exciting things that that really you know you know once you're involved in them of course that was a you know i would imagine i, I don't want to say the you know what will happen in the future but you have to remember we i was nominated we then changed leaders we had a leader step down yes. Patrick Brown. we then had a leadership in the run-up to the election that then led to you know having a new brand new leader um and and so it was a pretty exciting you know six months um and oh, I remember uh, your name was floated for leader as well like yours is one of the names of just like oh you know is he gonna go for it and you know like i'm sure it's flattering like of course it's very flattering but i can't imagine like the extra the additional pressure that adds and like the additional logistics that adds to your campaign which you just thought was going to be in ajax yeah i have to say it is enormously flattering when that comes up and 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 uh but i when i realized as a new member of the legislature what i didn't know um i have to say i'm glad that was someone else's job Right. Uh, I mean, it, it is a, it is a very different experience, and this is you know, and I, as I said, I've been around politics for a very long time, many decades. But um, as you found out, because I know you work on the staff side of it and experienced it, when you're the person, you said it. You know, the criticism, um, the the accolades. I mean, I find I find frankly, people in Ajax are they don't they're they're, they're critical, but they're generally polite when they're critical. Um, but but you also get the boy everybody suddenly nice experience. You know, uh, you know which which is not and not so much at home, but just in general. Um, and just the institutions uh, are are very significant. You know, whether it's a city council or it's a provincial parliament here at Queens Park or it's or it's in Ottawa, um, it's a big deal. You know, not that many people get a chance to do that. And so you have to feel a little humble by that. And, um, and I'm glad, I think it was a really, you know, this, as you said, since then, I've had the chance to be Minister of the Environment, now Minister of Finance. I mean, it's not like it's been boring. Uh, and, uh, and we have a, you know, global pandemic and, uh, you know, economic crisis to deal with. So, so Which it's is exactly it's, what you wanted in your first term, of course. <laughs> It, but it, but it's a, so it's so it's been a very um, it's it's been you know everything I could have hoped it would be in terms of the personal experience um, and um, and uh, again if if you enjoy the opportunity to make a difference and I'd say this to anybody who's listening because I imagine people listen to you who think about politics and think about it you know it is really an enormously enormously rewarding opportunity and, and I say that having had. A bit of a breadth of experience in other roles and in the private sector and done some pretty interesting things but uh, but nothing is as fulfilling as getting to see 
something get done that affects the kinds of numbers of people you can in a community like Ajax or, or where I have the opportunity province wide. Yeah. Um, is it, so it's like a, you're a minute, you were a, you were a minister, like you said, of uh, environment and now finance. Is that like a, obviously that's like a huge shift of like, we need you to be a subject matter expert on the environment and now on financials and like how the like the deficits and everything. Is that like, walk me through just like, is, is there like a shock? Is there just like, okay, let's just jump into it. Like how, how do you make that adjustment? It's a really, I, you know, I, I can answer that question better now than I could have two years ago. Um, the, the first thing that happens to you when you're a minister is you, you find out you're going to be a minister and, and, uh, and of course you're happy because that's, that's a good thing. And literally you, you go to be sworn in the next day and then you go and meet with, in my case, it was about a dozen senior bureaucrats. And I always remember this, this was on a Friday of a long weekend in July. And so you think about it, you know, people sometimes think about public servants and, you know, and, you know how hard they work, but like on the Friday, because I think by the time we went through the whole ceremony, it was yep. probably four o'clock and we literally met for three hours and, um, and their working assumption is that you really don't know anything about the, the your, job. Your, you your, yeah. yeah. And, and legitimately you probably are a bit overwhelmed by the fact, you know, you have no staff, um, you're a brand new government, you've, you know, never been elected, let alone a minister. Um, and, and they handhold you through a whole lot of those steps that, that, that gets you to the next, the next stage. But someone taught me this and it, it was a really, one of some of the best advice I got. It was from a very experienced civil servant who served at all three levels of government. And they said, you know, you're going to be tempted to think that your job is to be the smartest person in the room or to have the best idea. And they said, if you do, so wouldn't that be great? But, you know, when I think about my job over at Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, I literally had 4,000 people working with me who had been in that for a career, right? right? The thousands of people. I really didn't have to have, you know, I might have the odd good thought, but but their job, they, they're they professionals. They've worked at it. They understand the nuances. They do want to know what we want to do. They need to know your direction. But there's a lot of advice there. And if that, and as he said to me, if that's not good enough, guess what? As the Minister of Environment or Minister of Finance in Ontario, pretty much anybody will return your phone call. So if you'd rather, <laughs> you know, and I, and I did this in environment. If, if you want to talk to people who are expert around the world in things like climate change or other things, pick up the phone, right? But, right. but don't. Don't don't get obsessed with with having the right idea. Um, listen, uh, and then take those ideas and and put them into action, and and know that that team um, is there to support you. And and that's been my experience. I have to say, for two years, first at Ministry of Environment, Conservation, and Parks, which was a great ministry. I missed the rubber boots, um, and here at Finance, which you know, obviously a little bit more in my my wheelhouse because of my business background. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I you know, no one could be an expert on all the things that this ministry does. Right. And, and I don't think that voters expect you to be. No, it's it's absolutely it's absolutely true. Um, so I've you know spoken to Mark, and I'm speaking to you, and I was just find like the funniest thing. I think you had kind of grazed upon this is just like, you know, yes, you're on different parties, but I think what you know Mark said during my talk with him of just like the working relationship the two of you have is not something people expect. Uh, in fact, like I find sometimes when both of you walk into a room, there's this like weird tension where they're just like, <gasps> as if they expect you guys to like, you know, whip out knives and do like, you know, a West Side Story thing. And so it, it is, it has been very refreshing to see um, two people from different parties just, you know, build a mutual respect and I would almost say a friendship with each other on how best to serve Ajax uh, on both sides, provincial and federal. No, listen, I think people would be impressed if we did a West Side Story thing. Kind of oh, absolutely. Dance. You know, like, like you can, the, I'm sure you can dance. I'm sure you yeah, can dance. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, you know, I, no. But, um, but, the, uh, but, but, you know, the, the, that, um, I think that is, uh, that is absolutely the case. I have a lot of respect um, for Mark, uh, his experience, and frankly, his approach. And I have to say um, that uh, really got cemented around the work we were able to do together to support uh, Grandview Children's right. Center. And, uh, and it was one of these interesting you know, you, it, it, it's relatively easy to get along when there's nothing not to get along about. But this was a situation where there was a really important community priority and, uh, and we had wanted to bring some, some support to the table. There was an opportunity for the federal government through Mark to bring support to the table. Um, frankly, at the time, the provincial and federal governments weren't getting along um, on a lot of different issues. Um, but, but locally, um, we were able to say like, Okay, that's over there. Sure. And, uh, and so, you know, he brought uh, just under $20 million to the table that just wouldn't have been there. It's going to make all the difference for those yeah. kids. 
and um, and and I was able to help enable that because we needed the provincial money that was about thirty four million dollars before that. And and it, it's you know experience, and I'm sure you find this in politics. Like you get to realize who who to trust. Yep. And uh, and and you can trust uh, Mark Holland when he says he'll do something. And since then, I have to say, with the uh, the pandemic. I mean, I think politicians generally are being rewarded for working together. Okay. You know, this, the 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 Jets and the Sharks thing will happen when we get to the election. Of course. You know, and, <laughs> you know, and and um, and we all understand. And these are Mark's words. You know, at some point you put on a red sweater and a blue sweater, and and, and those are those are things. And there's an orange sweater and a green sweater too. But you know, as we were just talking about, most people don't um, really like that stuff that much and i find ajax is a place where people really there's enough going on in the community if you can't if you if you got time to be you know fighting out partisan things you better have done all your other work like okay. everything else better be going pretty well because they'll and, call you on that first of just like yeah. it's, it's great yeah. to go over those talking points but what have you done for me right that's that's what people want to know right and 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 i think uh, and i think mark's you know again mark's got the, the history of, of that in the community and and uh, and I and I'm always, it's always a pleasure to work with him and his office as you well know um, the teams in the offices do a lot of the work while, while Mark's up in Ottawa as the as the chief government whip which is a you know important cabinet role and I've got my responsibilities as well uh, here at Queens Park you know we have teams in the office that do much of the work to support constituents and, and I think they get along you know well as well and Dev and Don and people that they, they that I think that that shows well for us too. Well rumor has it unfortunately your office missed a chance to work with one of the greats at Mark's office because he went on for regional politics but I don't know that guy's name but he was just you know the, the legend speaks speaks louder I guess. Um, um, I know it's my it's my interview but how do you, I'm just interested as because I was a former staffer to a former staffer. Sure. What's the biggest What's the biggest difference you've found in terms of, of, of that, of the, of the community job versus the representing the community job? I think um, the biggest thing is just um, the degree of pressure of, you know, before I was Mark's, you know, right-hand man is what I, we always called it. And it was fine. I could represent Mark, but there was no stakes on me. You know, like it was like I was there and I was there to support, but like I didn't have to live or die by those decisions Whereas now, you know, whether it's budget, whether it's a social issue, it's just like, now it's my name on that. And now it's me speaking to that. And, you know, anyone knows, the more relaxed you are, the better you are at speaking, the better you are at everything, memorizing. And yeah. early on, I just found, like, I tried to be this idea, I, you know, I tried to be Mark Holland, to be very blunt of just like the way he speaks, not factoring in that was learned behavior after 20 years, right? So it's no. like, he, you know, he learned that. But it takes it takes you up a level when you when you I think it's always good to have people around who are good at what they do, and it, absolutely, and it, and it takes you up it takes you up a level, um, and uh, and yeah, you're right. It's no longer it is as if someone who did play the role as you had as a as a staff person giving advice. I, I you I don't know if he does this to you, Mark, but some of the people I work for, like Mel Lastman, they get a kick now uh, out of kind of saying, "Ah, oh, isn't so easy, is it?" Like yeah. you know, all the all that good advice that you could give to someone when it wasn't you who had to do it. Yeah, it's it's suddenly a little different. So. Well, especially Mark and I have a relationship of I told you so is our favorite thing to say to each other because we're both somewhat set in our ways. And so, no, he's been, you know, like I, I, I had a, I always describe it as a four-year apprenticeship under like a really brilliant politician, political mind. And yeah. then I still have that resource as a mentor um, whenever I want. Like, and generally, like, I think the key is I, I, I don't want my time to him to just be political, you know, like he's my best friend in the world. So it's just like, let's just put that aside. If we have to talk, we'll talk about work, but let's, we'd rather just kind of talk about everything. But which was kind of like the impetus for this podcast of just like, I need to get to know all these people I work with side by side. And I need to be able to just be like, you know, this is my next question. Rods, what's your favorite movie, Rod? You know, I've known, I think I've known you for what, two years, two and a half years now. And then I, I don't know what your favorite movie is. Well, like it, it, if you kind of go favorite movie by what have you seen lately? But I think the real way to judge a favorite movie is like the movie you could turn on and watch almost over and over time and watch over and over. And and then you, you kind of drop into a couple categories. But my wife, Lydia, would say, you know, if I was lying if I didn't say any Rocky movie with the exception, yeah. with the exception of Rocky Five. Five. Yeah. 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 And, and which, I, which I truly have not even been able to get through because I just, it, it it bothers me so much, but um, but but the great news as well, especially during uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, is that there's almost a continuous playing of Rocky movies. Like like Always you can turn somewhere, it somewhere there will be you can watch one through four, you know, and 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 or the one other one. So uh, that's, which is I, your favorite I, Rocky? 
which which um I'm, listen I everyone's like, supposed to say the first one because it is like the masterpiece right but i don't think that's anyone's true favorite uh listen the 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 rocky four yes thank you at, at a time at a time and because it was at a t- because it actually was it's like a, it's like also a time capsule Yep. Because it captures that kind of Cold War. Um, it was you know, in the 80s. I remember watching it when I was in school, uh, again, uh, in, uh, in London. And, uh, and it really captured a moment of yeah. the whole, like I remember the guy who was the knockoff Gorbachev, who's the- who's Yeah, the, and he was all the, upset at the traitor. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, um, so it's just, and it kind of, it also had reached the edges of, you know, it was, it was kind of like, you know, some of those, uh, the great uh, sitcoms where they kind of eventually Fonzie jumps the shark, like it just yeah. goes too far. They, had, oh, they were they, like the extremes of all of the, all the parts. The training, of the were, yeah, yeah, everything. It had just taken it to the level, like it wasn't good enough to do single arm push-ups while standing on your head. You yeah. had to be like. With rocks on your back now. Or... An awesome, yeah, yeah, while you were doing it. So, so I think it's, it's, the, it's peak Rocky. It would be my. Yeah. Book, I, I still yeah. maintain that movie ended the Cold War. Because of Rocky's speech, where if I can change and you can change, we really can all it. change. I mean, that's that's yeah. it. People give Reagan and Bush credit, but uh, no, it, it really was just uh, Rocky Balboa. <laughs> and then yeah, Rocky Five was garbage. Uh, Creed was actually it 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 creeps up as one of my favorite rock. But Creed One, Creed Two was kind of a yeah. mess, but Creed One was just a masterpiece as well, in my opinion. And I always love it when they can pick up those like can pick up what what is should be an extinguished you know kind of yeah. kind of franchise and and turn it around and uh, and still have you know Sylvester fresh Stone ideas but yes have a working have a working role you know yeah. that that kind of makes sense i didn't think they could have him do another fight that, that, that. I, I still maintain like it's him and schwarzenegger like they get older and older and you can see it in their face and that's fine we're all gonna get old yeah. But they still do these movies, and I still watch them every time. I'm just like, no, well, you guys did it again. I, 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 I for shame on me for doubting you guys. <laughs> no, I agree. No, it's a, it's a good franchise for sure. And what about television? Do you? I mean, you, you are, I, I would say, one of the busiest men in Ajax. I always see you on some sort of conference call, a yeah. Zoom call, kind of Ajax call. Like, do you have time to watch television? I, I don't much anymore, uh, and and uh, it's uh, probably I'm just as well for it. I think I've swapped out. The, the podcasts right. um, for it. Um, I certainly, uh, you know, in, in its day, if I were to say, what did I enjoy? West Wing, again, being yeah. a little bit more junkie. So good. It's kind of politics the way you wish it was, you know, yeah. where, where everybody who was a politician had like fabulous lines that they delivered perfectly every time, you know, you know, and, and, uh, and, you know, more or less the good guys always won, but yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's not a luxury so much anymore. I did, I did eventually uh, binge watch Game of Thrones, um, and, you know, That's just because I was, I thought that was, you know, that was pretty, pretty high art and pretty amazing uh, for, for, for its time. But uh, I think the hardest the part for any show right now is how to end the show so that you have a satisfying ending for people. Cause I find that's like the biggest like flaw with everything. Oh, it was great until the end, right. Whether it's lost or, you know, even West Wing didn't have a great ending that I recall. But I almost think that's kind of part of the thing. Like, you know, you know, if you have a massive controversy about the ending that you had a successful show. Because, True. Cause people are talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And sorry, just before we go, uh, you mentioned your, uh, your, your wife, Lydia, you're saying? Yeah. And how long have you been married for? We have been married 20 years uh, this year. Oh, so, you married uh, Y2K? Yeah. You got married? <laughs> we did. Yeah, actually, we did. We did. In Wait, fact, seriously? Bit, January 1st? Um, well, not exactly. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But, but, it's, but, it's, but it's a bit of a, but it's a, bit of a, of a funny story, uh, just to back to maybe what I was talking about, about people who like politics. So, so we, um, we, we decided to get married, but I was in the role of the chief of staff to the mayor of Toronto at that time. And frankly, if we'd wanted to have a large wedding, that would have been pretty tough to do um, because it would have been very large. Right. So we decided, we decided to have something quite quite small and um and so in doing that um we also had to time things because at the time we were negotiating the first labor agreements for the new city of toronto which was very complicated because you had 54 different agreements for i think a dozen different unions all being condensed down into into one thing and and it was it was just a busy time and so um so i actually had we planned the wedding um around we wanted to take a little trip uh for it but we planned the wedding around the um the fact that we knew there was a window where there couldn't be a strike because I knew that there was a time because because we were just doing it with family that was easy to do and then we thought about how would we tell people so so we um we would decided to go to France uh, because neither of us had been and uh so just before we got on the plane um Lydia had taken a bunch of uh postcards that had Paris on it 
and we'd written them to all the people that we would have invited if we'd had a wedding. And we wrote it, <laughs> we, we wrote it out and said, you know, in Paris, having a great time, things are da, 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 by the way, got married. Right. And then we just literally dumped them all in the mailbox. In the mailbox and and God, that is amazing. And, and so it was, so then that we, the, I had a lady who worked with me at the time who worked with me for a long time. And that generally people would have believed Heather, I couldn't have done anything without telling her. So we didn't tell her. And I did tell Mel Aspen, to be fair. And, right. and Mel, to his credit, kept it. Kept it, kept but, it, mom, mom's the word. So all these cards started landing, right? And all these people started phoning Heather, who not only did people not believe that I couldn't organize anything without Heather, but Heather was fairly sure that you couldn't organize anything without Heather. Without her, yeah. So, so, she, so she, she basically said, this must be the equivalent of fake news in 2000 at the time. Uh, it can't be the case. So, um, so anyway, we, uh, we ended up uh, you know, getting, uh, getting married. Obviously, it's worked out uh, 20 years on. And, uh, was it and, in uh, Paris, presumably, or a smaller town? We got, we got married here, but we just went there for kind oh, of great. Uh, yeah, and it was, you know, a lovely, lovely city and, uh, and great, great uh, honeymoon. Well, that is the sweetest story. In 20 years, my goodness, I'm only, uh, I'm hitting four. I just actually, six days ago, hit four. Um, so, yeah, I guess I have my work cut out for me. <laughs> I got to go five time. times that. Time. No pressure. Yeah. Uh, uh, before we go, um, you know, you're, we always see you around Ajax. Is there any kind of small business or nonprofit? Yeah, you want to plug maybe a restaurant or anything like that? Listen, I think it, for, in terms of small businesses, one of my favorite places is Ocuts, Omar's, uh, Omar there at Ocuts and across from the town hall. And, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm not exactly sure when the podcast is playing, um, but, uh, but of course, uh, you know, Durham and Ajax. We'll be reopened by that, yes. But yeah, so we're opening up Friday for stage two. Um, so I think that's going to be, he is, uh, he is a great entrepreneur and, uh, and runs a great business there. Um, and uh, and I gotta, I'd have to shout out McGuire's. Uh, of course. You know. Just, just because you got to say that, and an uh, institution, and, and I love, uh, I love the crowd there. So I can't wait to. Uh, their patio is pretty small, but I can't wait to see our friends uh, back there. And obviously, just excited that we're getting into this next uh, stage as far as uh, seeing things open up and uh, and coming back. And if I can, you know, just because you know people have been so great uh, in Ajax across Durham in terms of uh, through this whole whole challenge of the of the pandemic uh, i just think it it um you know uh, our premier doug he talks about the uh, ontario spirit it's just been it's just been wonderful to see how people have supported each other and Absolutely. ajax has just stood out above the crowd the, the work that you and the mayor and the council have done around that has been great and just uh, just people ajaxians have been fantastic so uh, looking forward to getting getting uh, things a bit more open up and getting things back back to normal but uh, but listen i appreciate i really appreciate the time today Absolutely. And looking forward to seeing you face to face eventually. You know, it's been, I think, over 100 days now. I know, and, uh, I know. You, I'm sure you, you miss this, right? I do miss you. And you do seem to look the same. So uh, Yeah, no, so. I just plus uh, 30 pounds, I'm going to say, conservatively. They call, they, they call it the COVID-19 for a reason. So. Well, 19 kilograms, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so, uh, folks, <clears throat> I'll put the uh, restaurants uh, in the comments. Uh, Rod, where can people find you online? Um, my, uh, best, best is to, uh, use my, uh, my address, my, uh, my email address. So it's just, um, rod.phillips at ola.com. Um, and so that's, the, that's the best. And, and, uh, and other, otherwise the, uh, constit office. So it's one Roslyn West, but the number there, 905-427-2060. So 905-427-2060. And, and we're always happy to help. Great. And of course, you can find me at Your Voice for Ajax. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Rod, thank you very much for joining us. And we will see you next time on the next episode of Durham Unplugged. See you, everyone.